things. Okay, write down revision of mass, weight, density, uh, measuring, measurements, etc. It's a revision class. We will all be doing this. Okay, those people who I'll be giving you 30 seconds after each definition to copy. You can copy it again. This is a way of revising. Okay, keep your register. Write down today's date. Today is the 24th of September, 2000. 24th of September. Today is the 24th of September, uh, 2022. Okay, this is a revision class. It will revise everything that you already know and upgrade you. What is mass? Mass, it is the amount of substance a body holds. Its units are the mole. And the SI units is all measured in kilograms. Is all measured in kilograms, right? Start writing. Don't don't wait for anybody. Mass is the amount of substance a body holds. Its units are measured in moles and its standard international is some people use the word matter. Mass is matter. Matter is any substance. People normally confuse mass and weight. Weight is different. Weight is the force of gravity that acts on a unit mass. Okay, weight k units are newtons. Formula for weight normally internationally recognized is W is equal to mass into gravity. That's kilograms and gravity is meter per second square. So it's kg meter per second square and is given by newtons. And is given by newtons. Done. Code number two. Mass remains the same. Weight changes from place to place. Mass is amount of substance. Weight is the force acting on a mass. Mass is measured in kg. Weight is measured in newtons. <coughs> in this from place to place. Weight changes from place to place. Mass is measured using mass is measured using this picture. Okay. And weight is normally measured using the Newton meter, using the Newton meter. Top pan balance measures mass. They measure it in grams and the Newton meter measures weight. Okay, board number two done. You have 30 seconds to copy this. I'm going on to the next level. Newton meter measures the weight. Measure the mass. Measure top pan balance, normal balance, mass balance. You see these balances, they're different uh, companies. 
done. Next, we have some conversions, one meter, and we some conversion for calculating. Conversions, conversions or formula. One meter is 100 centimeter. So put your pens down. One meter squared would be 100 squared centimeter squared. That would be one meter squared is one yodwadre silor centimeter squared. And one meter cubed would be 100 cubed centimeter cubed. So it's one meter cubed would be one and six zeros centimeter cubed. This is the methodology for conversions and you need to keep this in there in gross to gross to you. Okay, this, this card needs to be close to you. It's a summary, it will help you. Similarly, if I have one centimeter, it is equal to 10 millimeters. One centimeter is 10 millimeters. So one centimeter squared is one two millimeter squared and if i say one cm cubed is equal to one zero 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 millimeter cubed got it volumes areas are the square are the square of lengths areas are the squares of length and only measured in a power square so if it's centimeter, it's centimeter squared. If it's meter, it's meter squared. If it's if it's anything in area, okay. If it's millimeter, it's millimeter squared. If it's meter, it's meter squared. So area is a millimeter in squared. It's the multiplication of two or more lengths. Volumes, all there are different kind of volumes that you come across. We have millimeter cubed, we have centimeter cubed, we have meter cubed. We have milliliters. Now, this is the very funny part. One cm cubed is equal to one milliliter. One cm cubed is one milliliter. One milliliter. Milli means one thousand. Milli means one thousand. So one liter has got one thousand milliliters or 1000 cm cube. This is locally and should be known by all physics students. By all, any question? Copy. The Newton meter is also called the spring balance. I forgot to inform my students. The Newton meter is also called the spring balance. All those kids who are joining online right now are coming late. What can I say? Clear? Good. The Newton meter, another word for the Newton meter is also the spring balance. So this is available. You can take a picture of it. Do not forget, this lecture is available online in my channel. You will go to it instead of going to uh, stop watching TikTok videos. Try watching a physics video. It helps. Okay. So this is gone. Next topic that we're doing right now is uh, let me correct you. The Newton meter is a spring balance. Is a spring balance. Uh, Another word which we commonly make mistakes, students commonly make mistakes, is that thing this is like this. It's called the beam balance. It's called the okay. Now people what students do is that they look at the beam balance. I'm making a weird picture, so no criticizing my picture. Okay, the beam balance, you put a mass, known mass here, and the mass of the unknown, and you try to balance it. Okay, so the beam balance is able to measure, the beam balance is able to measure mass. Remember the beam balance, the beam balance always and always measures mass. It does not measure weight. Only the Newton balance or the Newton meter or the spring balance, Newton meter 
or the spring balance. I repeat myself, this is a short form for Newton meter balance. Measures weights. It measures weights. The, the top fan balance, which you see, which is called the electronic balance, they're very accurate these days. Masses can be measured on, the, on, on, on those balances very easily. This is the other one. This is also called in Urdu the Tarazu. The Tarazu. Okay. The Tarazu up. He's got his tarazu. Okay, but when you go into the tarazu, you've got to be very careful. He's not got some weight attached to the thing. So you have to keep checking. Without the substance, is it weighing equally or not? Otherwise, it follows the laws of physics. Follows the laws of... And he cannot teach you. You just got to be careful. That's it. So have you got any question? The tarazu is also called the beam balance. Beam balance. Please copy this. This is board number three. Newton meter or Newton balance. Don't forget to make these notes. These notes are not supposed to be missed. Let's go further ahead. Let's go further ahead. Because once you cross class nine, your, your, your spectrum of knowledge has to go up. Okay, a strong, small point that we have right now and points that come out right now is people have a question about, about the... Uh, this. this is a measuring cylinder. The measuring cylinders have the ability... Measuring cylinders have the ability of measuring up to two liters. Up to... So it depends on how big your measuring cylinder and they are as small as to measure 100 milliliters. 100 milliliters again means 100 cm cube. Irrespective, you need to be knowing some important facts about the measuring cylinder. You cannot put boiling water in measuring cylinders, they crack. Okay, and if you want to put boiling water in measuring cylinders that do not crack, they must be thick glass. Thick glass. Okay, or they must be Pyrex glass. Okay, they're very expensive, so don't go around breaking them in the laboratory, correct? Measuring cylinders have the ability of showing a reading. Normally, the eye placement is here. This is my beautiful eye. Okay, the line goes something like this. And this is where the question comes in. There are two kinds of meniscuses that you see. One is called the lower meniscus. And one is called the... One is called the lower meniscus. And one is called the upper meniscus. This is the lower meniscus. The upper meniscus, however, upper meniscus, however, could be something with the tip out on the top. Now, this only happens in the case of mercury, AG, mercury. Mercury has a lower meniscus. Mercury is mercury and is a, let me ask you why mercury is a cohesive, it's cohesive in nature. Cohesive in Nature. Kya matlab cohesive means apne aap se chipakta hai. So measuring jab karte hai mercury ke case mein to wo apna upper meniscus rakta hai kyunki wo glass se nahi chipakta. Water, that's H2O, commonly known, chemical name, is in adhesive. Adhesive means aapas mein chipakta hai. Sticks, sticks to itself sticks to itself sticking to itself means you have drop a small drop of water here you touch it it will chipify you you take a small ruler you touch water to it water will chipify to it so it has the ability of chipifying it goes and chipifies okay to anything so in the case of a mercury we always see the lower in the case of water you always see the lower meniscus you always see the lower in the case of mercury in the case of mercury, we always see the upper upper meniscus in the case of mercury. Is that clear? So the drawing may not be that beautiful, but the concept should be clear in the case of uh, students. So basic cylinders are big and brown, uh, can be big and small. The smallest ones are as small as this. Okay, and they are able to measure up to 50 ml. That's nothing. Have you seen a Coke can? A Coke can has the ability of measuring from 250 a Coke can as a uh, 250 ml and can go up to 330 ml and the big bottles are in 500 ml and the 1.5 liter and the 1.2.25 liter so you have all these uh uh cans and when they say 
uh, 1.5 liter, they basically mean 1,500 milliliters or 1,500 centimeter cubes. So your volumes need to be clear, conceptually clear. Is that clear? We're building all of this so we can do and do some questions regarding mercury and the densities, the density of different substances. Okay, so your volume needs to be cleared in every way. There's some important, this is board number four, am I right? This board number here. I know the light up anybody here. Thank you. Let's go. Board number five. Oh, give it to me. Board number five. Let's start board number five. Board number five is a step up from board number four. Okay, what it does is that tells you there's some things called volumes. Okay, now we understand we need to measure normal things with volumes and measure cylinders, but then there's some volumes that you need to know. The volume of a rectangular solid, rectangular solid. What's a rectangular solid? A rectangular solid looks like this. If you criticize my picture, I will shut down the lecture. So don't criticize my picture. It's a length, a breadth, and a height. The volume of a rectangular solid is length into breadth into height. Obviously, there are some things that say surface area as well, but that part you do in math normally. That part you do in math. So we don't touch uh, we don't touch surface areas right now. Then a relative of the of the rectangular solid is the cube. Now this is a high common the new trends are that they tell you to measure the length of a cube or they give you a side view of a cube and they ask you to measure the volume. Okay. In the case of volume of a cube is L cube. A cube is a solid square looking figure. Square looking figure. Is that clear? So it's length, length, and length. So the volume of a cube is L cube. Are you with me? The some volumes that you need to know. Uh, copy this, you've got exactly 20 seconds. Okay, that's board number five down. We're on board number six right now. Board number six is an add on from the board number five. It's uh, rare, but I've seen cones as well. Cones can be upward or based out downward. Both can work on the same concept of one third base area into height. So cones and pyramids, pyramids, as some people say. Pyramids. Pyramids are just like cones and uh, they can be rectangular based or they can be square based. So it's always one third base area into height. Okay, that's the volume of a pyramid. Again, the surface areas will not be depth with us because it's part of math. You get cones are also one third base area into height. But remember in this scenario, it's not it's not a base area. It's inverted cone. It's not a base area. Again, this is we don't dealing with the base area. In here, this is the base area, and in here, this is the base area. So the cones and the pyramids are there. Indeed, any any consistent rectangular solid works in the concept of cross sectional area into length or height. Okay, that we what we do on board number seven. Copy this. Board number seven. Any any anything that's lying down. Now remember one thing. Anything lying down, we call it length. Anything lies down is called length. Are you with me? Anything standing up, we call it height. That's the concept you guys need to do basically. Okay. So it's something base area. If this is the area of a cylinder that's lying down, to be there. If this this becomes the cross sectional area or the CSA cross section area into length, and in this case the base area into height. It is the same concept. It all depends on how whether it's lying down or it's standing up. If it's lying down, it's length. If it's standing up, it's okay. So just want to clear this out. Okay, so we're going to continue with same concept. I need the the board. Okay, so this is what we're going to do now. Is that we're going to take a high common question, and we're going to we're going to take a cuboid 
and we're going to calculate a volume, its volume, and the percentage that is empty or filled. And this is a cube. Okay, this is a cube. If the length of this is seven centimeters and the height is filled up with is uh, three centimeters of water here. So we want to calculate the amount of water in this cube. Okay, cubicle tank. Cubicle tank. We want to know how much water it has. So three centimeters here, or let's put it for three meters, and we put this in meter unit. So if you want to find out what is the total possible volume of this tank, the volume of the tank would be L cubed, and that would be seven into seven and seven. That's 343. 343 meter cubed of water. Okay, this is a very big tank. A seven meter tank means something that holds as big as this room. Can you see this room? This is a very big a room. Okay, so it's a very big. It can hold 343,000 liters of water. That's a big tank. Okay, meter cubed of water. That's a very big tank. Are you with me? So, this is what volumes are all about. So I'm, I don't want to go there right now, but I'm just going to do this. Let's understand this. If this is a, this is the amount of uh, what is the volume of water in meter cube that the tank holds. Okay, at this particular moment, so you say the volume of water is the base area, which is square based. Are you with me? Which is seven into seven. Are you with me? And the height of water is three. So the seven sevens are forty nine, and a forty nine into three is one hundred and 47, 147 meter cubed of water. Now in reality, in layman, layman's calculations, can you please tell me how much water in liters does it hold? How many waters in liters? Liters is centimeter cubed. Liters is? So 1,000 centimeter cubed is one liter. Yes or no? Are you with me? So if anybody, you know, being a math student and a physics student, you need to know the conversion. You measured the, measured the water. It had got three meters of water, 147 meter cubed of water, correct? You did the length, you did the breadth, you did the height. Yes or no? That's seven is seven and it's three, right? You found the water, amount of water in the, in the tank. Yes or no? Yes. But if you ask you how many, how many liters of water does this tank hold, then that's when your calculations comes in. You see, hold, hold on. It's 147. Pick your calculators up right now. 147 meter cube. You know, I want to first convert it to centimeter cube. Are you with me? One meter has got 100 centimeters. So I'm going to say, if I want to convert this to cm cube, I'm going to multiply by 147 by a hundred and a hundred and a hundred. That makes it one, four, seven, under, 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 cm cubed of water. Luckily, that's not the answer. Why? Because you're not looking for centimeter cube. You're looking for liters. Are you with me? So one liter is 1,000 cm cube. You need to divide this object, this number, by 1,000. Yo. Dua, three. Yo, dua, three. So how many liters of water does it have? One, four, seven, thousand. One hundred and forty-seven thousand liters of water. Do you understand what I just said? Do you understand what I just said? This is how do you do the calculations. Now, these are not common questions in physics normally. They don't come in physics that but you need to know as a physics student, you need to cross a small threshold. Are you with me? So copy this, I'm giving you one minute to do this. Take your one minute and do this. Let's do the calculations. If you can't stand up in your seat, see it. Oh, and always remember there is a lecture which I got copied for you. I'm recording this for you. So you need to run through it again. Okay? Especially if you're in class nine, you need to cross these measurements. Class 10th and 11th graders normally are overconfident. So they tend to ignore it.
Okay, guys, we just cross board number seven. What is the seven? You are going to board number eight right now. So these calculations are all on the group. You will go on there and you show yourself and attend the lecture. Okay. Okay, so we crossed a little threshold right now. We're going on to density right now. So, okay, density is defined as the mass per unit volume. This is the high, this is very high. The new trends going in with physics teachers. They just want you to do this. Board number eight, and we density. Density is defined as the mass is defined as the mass per unit volume. Per unit volume. Okay, mass per unit, volume, that's density, is mass over volume. Is that clear? Density ki kabhi ko abbreviation hoti hai. Okay, rho. What? Greek word rho. It doesn't mean cry, it means rho, just rho. Okay, so the units of kilogram density are kilograms. Put your pens down when I'm talking. Kilogram per meter cube and the second one is grams per cm cube. Okay, this guy is the SI internationally recognized way of going about it. For students, remember one thing. Your conversion from grams to cm cube kilogram per meter cube is made easy by me. You don't have to go like you would buy this and buy that and that and that. I made it very easy. Okay, you just go grams per cm cube. If you want to go to kilograms per meter cube, all you got to do is multiply by 1000. And vice versa, that's divided by a thousand. If you want to go from kilogram per meter cube to grams per cm cube. So this is the shortcut and don't miss it. Okay. So copy this and go ahead from it. The shortcut. Shortcut. So density is defined as the mass per unit volume is given as rho. Is that clear? Rho. R-O. Rho, rho, rho. Rho your boat. Okay, now density people have a misconcept. I need to clear this out. What is density? Uh, heavy? Yeah, relatively, yeah. You see, density is got to do with mass. So the amount of mass an object has and the volume it holds. That is what density is all about. Let's, let's take a word. I am in a cross section view of a swimming pool and I put a piece of wood here. Please put a piece of wood here and surprisingly, and not surprisingly, it floats. Now, there are different kinds of woods in this world. Don't assume that all woods float. Okay, all woods don't float. Okay, all woods don't float. There's a wood, please, if you want to see, Go to my aquarium, have a look at that. The wood inside the aquarium that's under the water is bog wood. Its density is greater than that of water. So for purposes of understanding, we normally say lighter than water. That's a mis incorrect sentence. It's incorrect. Things that float in water must be lighter than water. That's our stupid way of saying it. In reality, you just have to say, 
anything, anything that has a density lesser than water, that is 1,000 kilogram per meter cube, will or should float in water. Should float in water. Is that clear? So let's talk about the most common thing that we have. That's you, me, all of us. Are you with me? Yes or no? Why do we drown? Because we try to save ourselves. Trust me, your density is less than that of water. You're not supposed to drown. If you jump in a, or if you're pushed in a pool, stop worrying. And you don't have to do yoga for that. Okay? Just leave yourself, you come up. That's what the concept is. That's what the concept is. Is that clear? So anything that is lighter than water should theoretically float in water. Okay? There's some kind of teak woods and some kind of bog woods which do not float in water because their density is greater than that of water. Okay? Mercury's density is also greater than that of water. So it does not float. Mercury would go down. Okay? Steel would go down. Metals would go down. You! However, should not go down because your density is less than that of water. Are you with me? So what you do is just because you try to save yourself, you drown. Leave yourself, you float. Okay? Are you with me? And please, that doesn't mean you go and jump in the water now. Okay? That doesn't mean. So don't try it at all. Okay? Right? Thank you. Now comes the very concept. There's a sea in the world where people don't die. What's that sea's name? Dead Sea. And why is that called the Dead Sea? Because no animals live in it. It is so salty. And because of the salt, dissolved salt, its density is so much higher that people like you and me would always float. There's a picture I'm sending you right now. So you can just view it for your own knowledge. Okay? Okay, this is the lady right there swimming, relaxing with newspaper. I don't know why she's reading a newspaper in the sea. But that's how people are, okay? I'm so sorry, I forgot about the meeting. Who is that? Abdul Hadi? Abdul Hadi, yes sir. That's okay, Peter. We have you we have you covered. I recorded it. I knew people like you would forget. Thank you, sir. Especially when Thank you, you consider. Yeah. Okay, now let's go ahead. We understood this, everybody. Anybody who's lighter than water would float. Anybody lighter than water would float. Any question? Anything more denser than water? Anything more denser than water would drown, you know, would go underwater. Anything less denser than water would float in water. Oil is less dense than water. Do you know why oil fires are not put off? With water, but when we throw the water on the oil, the oil will come over the water and then it will keep on burning. You understand? That's why oil fires ko pani nahi pekte. Is that clear? You throw sand on oil or you throw certain foams on oil that covers the oil fire. Is that clear? So these oil wells will catch fire. You don't throw water at it. Hey, hey, pani dal down bujane ke liak nahi. Okay, is that clear? Is that clear? Pani float kar jayega, pani ke liye upar do oil float kar jayega, jalta rahega. So, aap bolenge hai, ye kya ho? Okay? Okay. Next, board number nine. Is everybody with me? Board number nine. The common thing that's happening right now is the measuring cylinder. This is what we do normally and we just go to reinforce it, okay? We take a little bit of water to the side. This is around uh, 40, uh, 40 cm cubed of water. And then I took a rock and I put the rock inside the water. This is the higher common thing that happened. The rise is in the water level. This is reading number one. This is reading number two. The rise in the water level must be the volume of the rock. So if you want to find the density of the rock, are you with me? You want to find the density of the rock? 
You need to have the mass of the rock and you have to have the volume of the rock. Yes or no? So this is the conquer concept. You put the put the conquer inside and the volume rises. Yes or no? I have seen it in my childhood. I iPhone in my childhood. Okay, so what is the conquer concept? You put the thing inside, the volume rises. The volume is change in volume or the volume of the rock. Volume of the rock is equal to R2 minus R1. Let's take R this as 70 cm cube level. And this is again, your, you need to use which meniscus in the case of water? The lower meniscus. You're always going to see the lower meniscus. Is that clear? The rise in the water level is R2 minus R1. That's 70 minus 40 cm cube. And the answer turns out to be 30 cm cube is the rise in water level. Yes or no? Okay, we measured the mass of the rock. Now, what do you do? There are some precautions you need to take. All students need to hear this. Would I measure the mass of the, would I measure Abdul Safi? Abdul Saif, Safi, Safi Asif. Safi Asif, would I measure the mass of the rock before I put it in the water or after? Safi Asif. Yes, sir. Well, wake up. Welcome to my world, my friend. Uh, would I be measuring the mass of the object before I put it, mass of the rock before I measure? Uh, uh, should I measure the mass of the ro rock before I put it in the water or after? Sir, before. And why would I do that? Sir because, sir, because the rock uh, will change the volume. Okay, the water will change the volume of the rock. Okay. The water will stick to the rock and thus cause a change in the in the mass of the rock. Okay? So you do okay, the measurement sir. of the mass of the rock before you put it in the because you water. For calculation of density, for calculation of density, for calculation of density, you need to measure the mass of the rock. But if the water, if you put the if you put the rock in the water and then you measure the measurement, okay, you got the volume, fine, that's cool. Now, oh, I forgot to measure the mass. I put the put the rock on the on the top balance, pan balance, and you find out, oh, it's the world mass is Remember, the water has stuck to the rock. So the ball, you're now not only measuring the mass of the rock, you're also measuring the mass of the water, which is obviously not what you're supposed to do. Is that clear? So you're supposed to make sure you measure the mass of the rock before you put it in the water. Indeed, it's not just a rock, it's any substance. It's any substance, okay? Do you want to say? So that's done. So if you say the mass of the object was 20, uh, 30, uh, 108 grams, the rock had the mass of 108 grams, and I put it in the water at this, actually it should be more than that, 210 grams, okay? And the volume turned out to be this, are you with me? So how would you do? How would you do the calculation? Now, again, I'd like my students to concentrate. Please wake yourself up for this two minutes. Okay. Density is equal to mass. So we found the mass of the rock as 210 grams. This is before we put it in the water. Correct? I so put in the formula. That's 210 grams. And the volume is 30. Is this acceptable? Yes. What are the units you're going to get it in? Pick up. The calculator, you don't need one. Three was three, three, three was three, three, seven, twenty-one. You got seven grams per cm cube. Seven grams per are you with me? Are you with me? Yes, now for reality, I'm gonna wake you uh, guys up a little bit. That's seven grams per small drop of the rock. Okay, very small piece, it's of seven grams. Do you understand this? A drop of water is maybe one cm cube. Or maybe two drops are one cm cube. So two drops of water would be weighing seven grams if they were made of the rock. You are now trying to imagine what density means. Density means the amount of substance is have a rock obviously has more substance compared to the water. That's why its density is. This was board number eight, and I'm continuing the same thing. I'm not. I'm not going on another board. This is temporary. Wake up. Okay. Board number nine is with you, along with board number eight. I need to give you the density of water. 
The density of water is one gram per cm cube. Or 1,000 kilograms per meter cube. Are you with me? The density of the rock here you're dealing with is 7 grams per cm cube. That's why the rock will go in. But to by 1,000, that's 7,000 kilogram per meter cube. So that small little rock, one meter cubed of the rock. Now I'm going to go live and I'm going to remove the camera. And I'm going to give you a different perspective, a different camera altogether. Okay? This is me. And this is one meter. This is one meter. This is one meter, okay? From here to here is one meter, as you see it. Another meter is here, from here to here, and one meter down, this much down. So if I am able to explain to you, this is one meter from here to here, from my head, to my trousers is one meter. One meter this way and one meter this way. If I had a rock as big as this and this high, it would be measuring seven tons. How much? Seven tons. And to wake you up further, Look what density is all about as far as mercury is concerned. The density of the mercury is 13.6 grams per cm cube. That's 13,600 kilogram per meter cube. That's how dense mercury is. Okay, I'm going to show you this small little piece. Okay, this is poisonous, so I'm not going to be playing around too much with it. This is small mercury. Okay. Okay, a small piece of mercury in a plastic box. I'm in the board, please. Sanitizer. This is mercury. I got this small mercury. This may be around about 5 cm cube. We'll put it here. Put it here. And I'm going to drop the box and it's going to tell you what the mass is. You know how heavy this is. This is like a rock solid. Okay. This is mercury which I especially got from the lab for you people a few days back. And this mercury, which you see in the thermometer, which you see in the thermometer, this is a liquid form. Mercury is a liquid. How heavy is this? Come here. You hand to it. Tell people how heavy this is. The imagine this? how heavy is it? Is it really heavy? Yeah? Okay. You know how heavy this thing is? It's like heavier. Right now, this thing is as heavy as my iPhone 10. My iPhone 10 is probably a little less heavier than this. And amount, the amount of liquid there is, nothing. Only part of the screen. See how heavy this is? So if I drop my iPhone in the sea and I drop, drop this mercury in the sea, what will go down first? Mercury. No doubt about it. This is what's telling you about density, my friend. Assuming that they're the same mass. But look at the area difference. You can surface area difference. Are you with me? This is your mercury, my friends. I can open it up, but it'll be a problem putting it back in. Because mercury keeps on dancing around. Okay? So I have this mercury here. And I have this, and I will cover it up because you're not supposed to have fumes of mercury around. Yes, and one more thing: carpenters normally store their uh, store their wood, and wherever they are storing their wood, they take a small, little, small one-inch hole and they put a drop of mercury there and cover it up. You know why they do that? This small drop of mercury for the next five feet on my right, up, down, left, three meters. Three meters, okay? That's about 10 feet. Left, top, bottom. 
all the insects run away from it. Okay, they're scared of the mercury. Mercury fumes are dangerous for human beings, but taken in larger quantities. Is that clear? Okay, therefore we have the seals. So I'll just give you an idea. It's like my iPhone falling and this falling. This is falling faster. You understand? That's how heavy it is. Okay, is that clear? So mercury is 13.6 times and in the same size, go back and stand here. And go back and stand here. Okay, the same size. Imagine me, 115 kgs. Size doesn't matter. Okay, so if this is one meter by one meter by one meter, a box, if it was full with milk, you know what it would mean? It would mean 13,600 kilograms. What? 13.6 tons mass fitted in a box. That's like 13.6 elephants fitted in that box. How much? Yeah, even if there are two ton elephants, there'll be around about seven elephants fitted in the box. Can you fit seven elements in the box? Well, that's how dense mercury is. This falls. Tuck. Okay? Are you with me? So this is what density is all about. Is that clear, guys? We're going to go online again. Ready? So let's go ahead. So this is mercury. Board number nine was an upgrade to board number eight. Okay, I give you an idea what mercury, how heavy mercury is. And look at the stone. And stones fall in the water. They go like pop. And imagine now mercury would be going almost twice the speed. Are you with me? And that's just water. Gari bichara, bazaar kilogram. Or ham lo kya hai, usse bhi halki hai. Ham lo to? Okay, or shiman ke baal sabse halki hoongi. Because it's a hawa bari bhi. So coming, coming back to this, please copy this working right now. This is the working we did. We got the density of the mercury. We got the density of the mercury. And then you guys have the opportunity of copying it. Come on, hurry up. Online, so on a record. Who has an abbreviation? Who has density? Abbreviation to density. Okay. Normally, strings are attached to this. Like you pull the rock out, you know, throw the water out, go with the water again and again. Okay. Known volumes are put in water. Okay. And there's enough water to be able to submerge the rock. Okay. Remember. Enough water to submerge the rock. Is that clear? Copy these densities, they are part of the syllabus. All IGC, SCDC, they are part of the syllabus 30.6 submerging. Abdullah, I haven't seen you in my classes regularly. What's the problem? Okay, let me just repeat this. If you ever do get the last previous question for board number nine, 
In board number nine, we had a previous calculation, board number eight, we had calculations of board number nine is upgraded now. If you had the calculations done in grams, they had given you the mass of the rock as 2.210 kg. Are you with me? You would have just multiplied it by a thousand and make it 210 grams. The unit density is equal to mass over volume. You would have 210. The volume was already given to you in 30 cm cube. You left it at 30 cm cube. Don't try to convert this to meter cube. Just because they ask you for kilogram per meter cube, do not make this meter cube. It just complicates things. Make it easier. Just convert the kilograms to grams by multiplying by 1000. Do the calculations. The volume is already given to you as 30. You do the calculation, density is equal to mass over volume. 210 divided by 30, chan, chan, and the answer is 7 grams per cm cube. Now, so easy to convert this to kilograms by multiplying by 1,000. Okay, it's easier to do it from, from grams per cm cube to kilograms per meter cube instead of complicating the volume. Oh, I got 30 cm cube. How much would that be in meter cube? Don't do that. Although that's easy as well. You just keep on dividing by 100, and divide by 100, and divide by 100. But you don't want to do that. It's easier to do the calculation in grams per cm cube, and then just multiply by 1,000 to make it kilograms per meter cube. So the answer would have been seven kilograms per meter cube. Is that clear? So that was board number nine upgraded. Board number 10. Board number 10 is the Eureka can. The Eureka can was designed in such a way that students were able to measure the volume of the substance they put in. The volume of the water was filtered here and nothing was left out. There's a measuring cylinder here, small measuring cylinder here, where the overflow of water takes place. The overflow of water. You put the mass inside, any mass that you want to put inside, and the overflow of the water, overflow of the water. If you measure that, you automatically find the volume of the rock. Okay? Volume of the rock. Are you with me? Or any substance. Correct? This is okay if the object is more denser than water. More denser than? Okay? This was a rock, and you know it's heavier than water, or more denser than water. It goes inside. What if you had a cork? A cork material. Are you with me? It's made of wood. Cork is made of wood. What would you do then? Well, there's a rectification. What would you do? Take a pin. Very good. You take a small pin and you press it down. Press it it's just so much it gets submerged and the water will overflow. The water will? Any question? You cannot make half the measurement. So you have to make sure that if you want to find the volume of the cork, you're going to push it down with a small pin. Is that clear? This is the correction. This is the correction. I repeat myself. This is the correction. You push the pin down, push the pin down, and it'll push the water down. It'll push the, push the water down, and the water overflows, and then you can find the volume of the cork. You can find the volume of the cork. But remember one thing. You use a small pin. You use a small. Any question? Any question? Any question? That's board number 10. Board number 10. And remember one thing. This is a word for it. It's called E U R I C A. E U R Eureka. R E R E K A. Okay, it's called the Eureka can. Okay, Eureka was a guy who was playing in the in a tub. And he had a can, he put something inside, and the water overflowed, and he calculated the volume and he said, okay. Now, these are people who are supposed to have a shower quickly, but they didn't, and therefore science was discovered. Okay? Is that clear? Are you with me? That's why they have the showers now. No playing with water, okay? Is that clear? That's board number 10. Any questions? Okay. From here, we move on to... From here, from here, we're going to also go and cover some kinematic questions. Is that clear? Okay, some vectors, students were asking you some vector questions. Okay, so you want to revise some vectors today? 
Oh, it's not coming in the test. We'll do vectors today. Yeah, vectors. New test. Okay. One or two questions, vectors. If you want to find out the result of vectors, people say that you can do it through calculations as well, but that's when you mature up a little bit. When you reach class 10th and 11th, I'll do those calculations with you. Right now, I don't want to give you a trade secret. I want you to do the construction, okay? So I have a vector, I say seven centimeters here, seven Newton force acting at an angle of 60 degrees with another force, which is nine Newton. Is that clear? Is everybody with me? So if you want to do the calculations for this question, you need to make a scale diagram. You go on, take a ruler, take your compass box, okay? You have a compass box? Somebody? Okay. You take a compass, make a long line, do an arc on this side and an arc on this side. This arc should be nine centimeters. Go on the side of your diagram and write down one Newton represents one centimeter. This is normally what you do. Okay, that's telling me that the eight car ratio chalta hai. Ja padra bees a jata hai. So ab do car ratio swar karte. One, two newton is equal to one centimeter. Are you with me? I give you a trade secret. This is what we did and how we learned from our teachers. First 10, 12 centimeters is okay and done easily by a ruler. By a ruler. And first 10 centimeters done okay on a four paper. Are you with me? That's 10, 12 centimeters. From here to here. But anything above that, if they say 20 centimeter or there's 25 newton or 30 newton. What are you going to do? You're going to use a bigger scale. Two newtons, one centimeter. Three newtons, one centimeter. Four newtons, one centimeter. Make a line. This is how you can do the construction. Have a look at this. First, make a line. Then you do a nine centimeter, would be somewhere like here. You make an arc and an arc. Arc from here, nine centimeter. Arc from here, nine centimeter. Remember, you have a nine newton force and a seven newton force and an angle of 60 in the middle. Are you with me? You draw a straight line, make an arc from here, fuck, dot a point, put a dot here and mark an arc, point. Are you with me? You're scaring me if you don't smile. Okay? You're sitting here, five feet away from me and making a space that looks like Count Dracula. Okay? Don't do that. Then you go over here, you put your protractor. Everybody's got a protractor? Yes, it's called a D in Pakistani terms. You put a protractor here and you make a 60 degree angle here. Are you with me? This is 60. Are you with me? And let it continue. With seven centimeter, seven even means seven centimeters. Let's go to seven centimeters and mark a line here. Okay, mark a line here. Is everybody with me? Congratulations, what do we have? A seven newton force and a 60 degree here and a nine newton force and this will always disappear. Now remember one thing, if this baby was a 60 here, you can make another 60 here. Go here, put another 60, then it goes straight, 40, 50, I can't even see it. Okay, that's when you put the binoculars, from binoculars. Okay, 30, 40, 50, 60, there you go. Okay, you go here, make the ruler, you can even make it with an arc with your, uh, with your uh, protractors, and let's go straight. Are you with me? Are you with me? Okay. You just do the connection here, connect this point to this point, measure the angle, let's put the protractor here again. Okay, is everybody with me? And the result is a 10, 20, 30, 30, 34, 35, 36. It turns out 36 degrees, approximately 36 degrees from the 10, 9 newton force. From, I'm going to write down, from the 9 newton force. Okay, is that clear? You do 36 degrees, that's your resultant of two forces 9 newton and 7 newton. Is that clear? It's 36 degrees from the 9 newton force. I was thinking more like it would be something like. Uh, 10, 20. Uh, why was it getting out of 36? 10, 20, 27. It's 27 degrees. 27 degrees. Correction? Approximately 27 degrees. And the resultant will be how much? Let's have a look at it. 
the result is approximately 14 newton approximately 14 newton because i'm doing rough calculations the result is approximately 14 newton i can do it through calculation method as well but this is not how i do it remember one thing no arcs no marks and that is very very important to rule so mark your arcs here mark an arc here this must be seven centimeter mark another arc here from here seven centimeter mark another arc from here which will be nine centimeter and this is where they intersect connect this two babies together and this is your result is that clear now it's turning more like 30 degrees i would like i would rather say 30 degrees so okay this is my rough estimates it could be close or wrong okay but your answers need to be close to the one or two degrees maximum difference is that clear your calculation is very important your protector needs to be a one that's good and your compass needs to be there too is that clear and the ruler needs to be transparent the one which you're using and your compass needs not not be loose you tighten it before you go for the exam is that clear is that clear so all regular shaped volume regular shaped objects ki density nikalne ka aasan tarika tha wo aap directly volume nikal lete mass nikal lete measure kar lete regular shape ko drop karte hain aapne measuring cylinder mein ab revise kara raha hu vectors ke andar aap scale diagram bade clearly likhenge ya 9 cm represent 9 cm represent 9 newtons so 1 cm 1 newton represents 1 cm that scale has to be written down arcs are mass if you don't make arcs you don't get marks it's very simple any question i'm going to send you a few questions uh more on the on the on the on the group so you can do a few questions from there as well okay there's a question line coming in right now for students who are going to do this or uh, prepare for the next week so there you go the first question coming your way right now try to do these questions they'll just help you improve your results okay is that clear and okay sending your way right now so i'm sending two topics right now to all students in physics and math okay so that's how so let's go on to kinematics now you know you know okay yeah okay so this is construction any any question regarding construction please inbox me you know my number 03218266677 just inbox me if you have a question this is my number okay will be done done any question Good. So send me a question. We have problems regarding this. We're going on to board number. We're changing the topic right now to velocity versus time graphs and all sort of graphs and speed time graphs and using the formula. Now remember one thing we are doing now is kinematics. Kinematics. Kinematics is about four main formulas that you normally use. Okay, in kinematics, speed is equal to average speed is total distance divided by total time. Okay, are you with me? And then the formula V is equal to U plus A T. V squared is equal to U squared plus two A S, and S is equal to U T plus half A T squared. Okay, there are worksheets regarding this from different schools, which I've I've already forwarded to people. Formula number two, formula number three, and formula number four. Okay, I normally call this one, two, and three, and call the other one. Formula number four. Okay. Sometimes they can ask you about average. So what is acceleration? Acceleration is the rate of change of the rate of change of velocity. Yes or no? I'm giving a revision. Remember, this is a revision class, right? Acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. Okay, what is velocity? Very good. It's the rate of change of rate of change of this. Place this. Then somebody said, "What's the difference?" Well, one is a vector and the other is a scalar. 
which one velocity is a vector and speed is a it is a rate of change of of distance distance is a distance is a scalar this is the vector and this is the vector okay what's a vector a vector is an object that's got both magnitude plus direction what's a scalar only only magnitude only magnitude is that clear so a uh, quantity that has got both magnitude and direction is called a uh, vector velocity has got size and direction acceleration got size and direction speed is a general term it's a kilometer travel ki it's in second way so there is again the concept is it there is there any other formula we been solved yes speed or velocity is both measured in meters per second or kilometers per hour yes or no so kilometers an hour or meters per second so there's a conversion there's a conversion possible so what i'll do is that i'll write down this here speed is equal to kilometers per hour and meters per second two units speed of velocity ke two units hai again this meter per second again this meter per second remember one thing speed and velocity speed and velocity ka conversion hai kilometers an hour to meter per second you divide by 3.6 again this is a shortcut okay it's a shortcut shortcut to life helps you in math and meter per second kilometers an hour you divide by 3.6 is that clear this is the shortcut that you require any question any question to so use this as many times as you can to make your life easy okay these shortcuts are supposed to make your life easy any question so the conversion is very simple kilometers an hour if i'm traveling if i'm traveling at 100 kilometers an hour and want to know uh, pick up your cast please right now if i'm traveling at 100 kilometers an hour i want you to know what's the speed in meters per second i'm going to divide by 3.6 and what does turn out to be 20 how much 20 27 point something right okay and if i'm go traveling at 108 km an hour my speed is 30 meters per second please check is it 30 so if i'm traveling at 20 meters per second is my please check please do with the calculation if i'm traveling at 20 meters per second is my speed is my speed 72 km an hour check it out if i'm traveling at 10 meters per second is my speed 36 meters per second km an hour please check if i'm traveling at 30 meters per second is my speed 108 km an hour yes okay okay that means you're on the right track right guys okay must i share let's go to so kinematics board number 1 okay this is what you need these formulas please copy this I'm going to give further updates for this right now, starting on board number two. Copy. The Kalsuba of class board number one of kinematics. Board number one of kinematics. We do a basic introduction to kinematics, and then we go and explain what these three formulas are all about. If an object is accelerating at a constant rate, if an object is accelerating at a constant rate, so you use any of the formulas u plus a t, v squared is equal to u squared plus two a s, and s is equal to u t plus half a t squared. Remember, all formulas have a. This is called non-variable kinematics. I in the board. It's called non-variable kinematics in the sense that it has got a acceleration that is constant yani ke object gaadi object figure bullet anything is accelerating at a constant rate at a constant rate acceleration hona zaruri hai acceleration hona zaruri hai okay so v means final velocity a means acceleration u means initial velocity t means time 
in seconds. Again, I repeat, we deal with meters per second. We don't play in kilometers an hour. If anything is given to you in kilometers an hour, you convert it. Anything given in kilometers, you convert it again. Is that clear? And the, uh, last but not the least is S is the displacement. Slash distance, depending on what you're dealing with. Any question? Any question? <coughs> An object starts from rest. So that's a question. Push this back, please. Push. Thank you. An object starts from rest and accelerates at three meters per second square for 20 seconds. Okay, case one. Case number one. An object starts from rest. And these are keywords. As a physics student, you're not a math, you have to be a math student. As a physics student, you need to have your data. Okay, don't play with data, you get lost. Rest means initial velocity is accelerates at three meters per second square. Write the data down. Write the data. Okay, for how many seconds? Eight seconds. What is the final velocity? Question mark. Which formula do we use? Formula number one. V is equal to u plus 80. V is equal to u plus. Are you with me? All students, I'm going to send you a picture. All students, I'm going to send you a picture of 10 questions which apply V is equal to u plus 80. Which apply V is equal to u plus, which apply these three formulas. You have to choose which formula to use. This small little worksheet is being sent to you right now. You can practice to choose which formula to use with the data that you have. Is that clear? So in this case, I'm going to send you that worksheet. That worksheet is very, very. In this case, we have the acceleration. Yep. We have the time. Yep. We have the initial speed. Yep. We want to find the speed. Can we use it? Yeah. Initial speed is zero. Acceleration is three. Time taken. Final answer is yes or no? Incorrect. Where's the units? Physics students have to put units. I do it like this, or you do MS minus one. Anything? Any question? Done. Case number one, you have 30 seconds to copy this. We're going to do seven more cases in the next 10 minutes. All right, guys. I can go over it. I have 